Well, I'm going to take a walk this morning. It's really cold. It's a beautiful morning here in Southern California. It's overcast, but uh, it's beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful, man. I, San Gabriel Mountains got some good, got a lot of snow up there. Well, I'm taking this walk because I need to practice more self care. And, you know, I've neglected myself a lot over the years. Um, it's really easy to do that, especially when you're living in a crazy place like Southern California. But, you know, as I mentioned yesterday in my first real vlog, I, uh, I'm learning how to practice self-acceptance a lot more. And when I got up this morning and I thought about taking this walk, I thought, you know, I'm feeling really hopeful. And I thought, why am I feeling so hopeful right now? Is it based on circumstances or is it based on the alignment of things in my life? Is it based on, what, what, why? What, what's creating that hope in my life? Is, is it my spirituality? Is it my faith? Is that why I'm feeling hopeful right now? And that's the thing about feelings. Feelings are really interesting. Um, because feelings aren't always rooted in truth be really frank with you a lot of my clients talk to me about feelings all the time but they're not sharing feelings they're sharing their thoughts you know they'll say things like I just feel like nobody cares about me okay well that's not a feeling that's a thought now I will share with them what is that thought based on you know is it based on on facts is it based on negative cognitions is it based on unhealthy thinking biases right well, a lot of times we can put our hope in things that aren't really rooted in reality. So I remember when I was much younger, a lot of my hope and excitement came a lot from my stuff. Stuff, you know, the motorcycles I had or the off-road, you know, uh, trucks that I had. The stuff that I did, you know, that's, that's awesome stuff. The problem was that I found myself finding a lot of hope in it, relying and depending on that stuff to give me hope. That's where I started having the problem, right there. It's when my dependency started shifting away from my faith and it started depending and relying on stuff. And that stuff became very addicting. Once you start developing it, relying and depending on things, you start to need more. Does that? Can you relate to that? Um, okay, so I'm going to stop for a second and just share with you, be breaking the story here, and share with you what I'm doing this morning, what I'm on. Well, yesterday I tried my EFS 10-18 to 18, uh, Canon lens, which is really cool. And you know what I found out yesterday? First of all, I found out that I have an adapter for my Sony. So now I'm on my Sony ZV-E10 using the 10-18. to 18. I, real, I didn't realize I had the adapter, which is really cool. So now I'm actually using the ZV-E10. I do have the Rode VideoMic Pro on top of this, so the sound is probably a little bit better. Um, I think I should probably get the wireless mic if I'm going to be doing more of this, right? Makes sense, huh? Instead of this big VideoMic Pro on the top of my camera. So... Maybe tell me what I should do in the comments below. Tell me what uh, what uh, wireless mic you think would be good for me. I have a feeling I know what you guys are going to say. Because <laughs> I watch some of you guys a lot talking about this stuff. But I think I'm going to do that if I'm going to do more of these. And I think I am, you guys. I think this is a, a, a self-care routine that I'm going to start doing for myself. That's going to help me in a variety of ways. But mainly... Physically, I need to get out in the mornings and do this for myself. You know, I sit on my butt all day. I work with people all day long. I listen to their problems all day long. And I love it. But I can also neglect myself in the process. Okay, so let me get back to the hope that I was talking about a second ago, okay? Hope that is rooted in something more substantial. So as I'm also getting older, I'm realizing that uh, how important hope really is. You know, we I think we throw around that word hope pretty recklessly, and it doesn't really have much meaning. 
Uh, I hope things are going to get better. Uh, this thing is going to turn out this, a certain way for me. Um, I hope that our relationship is going to get better. I hope that I'm going to feel better and I'm not going to feel depressed. I hope that my anxiety is going to go away. Okay. I hear that a lot. I hear stuff like that a lot. And I've said a lot of those things in my life. So here's the thing that's a little more tricky about that, okay, is the hope that I have in those things really has to do with me risking doing something different. That's what it's going to start with. That's what it's always started with with me. It's, it's not enough to hope for something based on how I feel. It's actually important that I be doing something about it. See, risking always leads to change. What's risky? Letting go of control feels risky to me because I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen. I, it's uncertain. It's, it's not in my control. It's not predictable. And I love control. I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a control addict. And you know, I've gotten a little better at letting go, but still, it's, control always seems to get the better of me. <laughs> and so I'm learning. I'm learning, people. So don't give me a hard time. It feels risky to let go. What is control? Worry is control. Preoccupation in your mind with things and fears and insecurities, all that is a form of control, okay? And you know, oftentimes we don't, we don't think of those things as controlling, but they are. Uh, so letting go of that stuff is not easy. It's, it's a challenge to let go of that kind of stuff. It, again, it's, we control a lot more than we actually know that we do, okay? Oh, wow, I've got a bunch of ravens over here going crazy. Okay. You see how that leads to change, though? That leads to doing something different. If you haven't watched this, I want to encourage you. Don't worry, I'm not being attacked <laughs> by, these, by these ravens, by these crows. I encourage you to go watch this episode. If you've ever watched Seinfeld, go watch an episode and look it up. It's called Opposite George. And it's a really great episode because... It's extremely accurate when it comes to cognitive restructuring or changing the way that we think. George, who's the most insecure person on the whole in the whole show, comes in one into the diner one day with Jerry and Elaine and Kramer. And he comes in and he sits down and they're like, Oh hi, hi George. And and it was it was the morning. He's like, Where have you been? And he goes, I've been at the beach. And they're like, Oh brother, the beach, yeah, of course. You know, you don't do anything, you're not even working, you're unemployed. And he says, you know, um, how, did I, how did it all get here? How did I end up like this in my life? You know, I'm just, I'm just a loser, basically. That's what he was saying. Well, it's pretty clear that George felt a lot of low self-worth. Okay? He felt a lot of shame about himself. Okay? Um, and this is where I really want to grow because I see people on this trail and I get a little more self-conscious, right? But it's okay. The waitress comes over and repeats what George always orders every single day. You know, you want this with eggs and this one. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she's walking away and George says, wait a minute, hang on a second. I order the same thing every single day. Nothing changes, nothing changes. Man, I'm coming up to a very loud talker. I thought I was loud. This guy's really loud. So, he says, no, I order the same thing every day, nothing changes. I'm going to order something different today, and let's see if something changes. So he tries to order the opposite, the exact opposite of what he always orders, right? And so he does. He orders, he tries, it, you know, even, even down to the coffee, he says, instead of a, instead of a cup of coffee, um, I'll, I'll have a cup of tea. The waitress walks away, she's going to go ahead and get him some, you know, his, she, she puts in the order. And Jerry's and, and Elaine then looks at George and says, George, there's a girl at the counter who's been staring at you. And he's like, what? Elaine, women like that don't look at guys, don't, don't, aren't attracted to bald men who live with their, unemployed bald men who live with their parents. <laughs> and, and she's like, well, and then Jerry says, well, this is your chance. Do the opposite. And he says, you know what? You're right. I'm going to do the opposite. 
the opposite of what I've always done. I'm going to risk. That's really what he was going to do. So he gets up, he walks over to the counter, sees this beautiful woman, and he says, excuse me, I couldn't help but notice that you were looking my way. And she says, yeah, you just ordered the same exact thing that I did. <laughs> and he goes, hmm. So he decides to take the plunge. What does he do? He says, hi, I'm George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. <laughs> and she looks at him with this look. She, she gives him a flirty look back and says, hi, I'm Jennifer. And, and George slowly turns around and he looks at everybody at the table like, what just happened? That's an example of risking and creating an opportunity for change to happen. I want you to watch the episode because the whole episode is George doing the opposite. In fact, in fact, at one point in the episode, he comes into Jerry's apartment and he's excited. And he says, Jerry, I cannot believe it. I'm doing the opposite that I've always done. And I'm being rewarded over and over again. And then he even says, I think I found my new religion. It's the opposite. That's my new religion. That's because he was exp experiencing such great reward from the risk that he was taking. Not the reckless risk, but the, but the risk. And, th and this is what he said. I have been rewarded by going against my best judgment and intuition. Is that funny? My best judgment and intuition. Now, let me tell you how accurate that really is. A lot of times our intuition and our best judgment is based on our unhealthy cognitive biases, right? Our unhealthy thinking biases. Shame, low self-worth. When we're making decisions based on that filter or through that filter of low self-worth, shame, beliefs that I'm unloved, unaccepted. When we're making judgments and our intuition is based on those things, on that faulty thinking, what do you think we're going to do? I made tons of horrible decisions with so many relationships I was in uh, when I was younger, much younger. And they got me into trouble because everything was based on my best judgment and intuition filtered through these unhealthy thinking biases false beliefs about myself, toxic thinking. And so that's what George's was. All of his decisions and his thinking was coming through his unhealthy thinking biases. Naturally, as he's going against them and doing the opposite, he's being rewarded. One last part of that episode, really funny, was when he gets an interview. Actually, no, no. He, he's dating this that, that girl that he met in the diner. And he drives her to her apartment. And they get there. And remember, George is usually needy. He's very needy. But he's not being needy anymore because he's doing the opposite. So he gets to her apartment and she says, you know, I had a really good time with you today. And I'm wondering if you'd like to come up. Well, of course he's going to say yes, right? Nope, because he's doing the opposite. So he says, you know, that's something I would normally do. And I really do appreciate um, the invitation. But he says, uh, I don't think so. I just don't think we're ready for that step. <laughs> and she looks at him and goes, who are you, George Costanza? <laughs> and he says, you have no idea. The very last part of that episode, I loved it. It was when uh, he got an interview through her. He got an interview with the New York Yankees. And he's interviewing, but he shows up for the interview in plain clothes opposite he gave the interview like just a very very casual interview and even the person who was interviewing him said George you're unlike anybody that I've ever interviewed before <laughs> he says well I understand so George is trying to be confident you see he's doing the opposite he's feeling a lot of confidence because he's been changing because he's been risking so now George actually has faith Okay? And that faith is turning into hope that he can keep doing it again. Do you get what I'm going with, with the hope? So, back then, George Steinbrenner, the owner of the Yankees, is walking by and the person says, Mr. Steinbrenner, 
I think there's somebody here that I want to introduce you to. So, George walks out to shake George Steinbrenner's hand. Or George Steinbrenner puts out his hand to shake, and George doesn't. And he says, you know what? You have some nerve to make the Yankees a laughing stock, all because of your big ego. <laughs> and George Steinbrenner says, hire this man. <laughs> so George obviously is an extreme example of what of the hope that can be created by risking change happening faith and and as that faith grows that we can do it again hope hope that we can risk and change again right that's there's a lot of healing in that so uh, I just want to share that with you today as I'm winding up my walk. You know, I'm thinking about... Morning. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Thank you. Some good people out here. There's some hope. Hope in humanity. <laughs> okay. So if you get anything from this, I want you to take... I want the takeaway. I want to hear what your takeaway is in the comments. Let me know. I'm going to keep trying to record some of these. As you can hear, I'm breathing a little bit. I actually took a decent brisk little walk here. Hopefully we weren't too shaky. I'm using the the uh, the stabe on the lens, which is cool. The ZVE-10, as far as I know, doesn't have any of that. Um, but this has been a good walk this morning. I, If you're listening to this, I appreciate your, your thoughts, your feedback. You know, we're we're not all that different. You know, we have a way of saying things like, nobody understands me. Eh, we're not all that unique in, the, in our psychology. Most of us struggle with similar fears and insecurities, etc. But what are we doing about it today? Let's think about the hope. What are you doing to risk that is creating opportunity for change, that is now creating faith in hope that you can risk and change again, okay? That's what we call the hope cycle. And ah, we can do it, you guys. It's, we have a lot of plasticity in these brains. Our brains are pretty amazing. They have a lot of, they have a lot of space to make adjustments. Just talk to a recovering addict. <laughs> those, those people are incredible, right? or somebody coming out of depression, um, people dealing with anxiety. These people who actually find lasting freedom from these issues, they're actually changing the chemistry of their brain. And if they can do it, we can do it as well, right? Feeling really hopeful today, but not based on circumstances alone. I'm feeling hopeful today because of the risk that I'm taking, the change that is happening, the faith that is growing, feeling hopeful to keep doing that again. There is a tremendous, a tremendous degree of hope for us today. Just think about it a little bit, okay? All right, all. Peace. Talk to you next time.